Okay, now, very often, um, this is a presentation, a small design we did many years ago um, of a city. Um, by next week, I will bring in um, a, a local case study because I just finished one design for an estate in Lagos. I just have to uh, seek the permission of the owner of the project so that I can use it as a case study. So next week, I'll, I'll bring another case study of a local case study. But for now, this is a case study that will give us an overview of um, what uh, water design is all about. Uh, once again, this is what we're going to go through in the next 10 weeks. Um, we're going to talk about water reticulation in the first three weeks. We'll talk about stormwater and sewage design the following three weeks. Then we'll talk about road design the last week, the, last, the next four weeks. At the end of this class, I'm going to give us a timetable. I have it on my system, but because of want of time, I might not start going through my folder, but I know I've had, I have the program already um, lying somewhere. Uh, maybe on my WhatsApp, one of my staff made it. Um, let me, but, but that, that suffices. Let, let, I'll, give, I'll give us the, the outline by the end of today. I'll give us the outline. So this is a typical example of the steps you're going to take if you are asked to design a water reticulation system. What and what are you going to do? Now, there are two things here. Is either you're coming from the angle of the consultant or you are coming from the angle of the contractor. But for this training, we are assuming you are the consultant. You are the engineering consultant, the civil engineer, mechanical engineer, who has an infrastructure engineer, which is what we are trying to create in the Nigerian context, because we don't have it in Nigerian University for now. Um, so you are asked to design a water distribution system, a centralized water supply system a water reticulation systems. All of them means the same thing. I'm just using them interchangeably. Whether it's a distribution system, a reticulation system, or a supply system, it simply means we want a, a, a centralized water supply network. So the first thing you need, you need a map. You need a layout. And that map must have um, topo. It's a map and a topography. Okay, there must be some form of um, top, topo of the area. And why we say topo, it simply means the height, the elevation. Because 90% of water resolution systems are done based on gravity systems. Gravity system means you have a water source, you have an elevated tank or a storage source, and then you have a distribution network. So you must have a place you're going to take that water from, which could be a groundwater, a surface water, an artisan well, a, a, a water supply, a long distance water supply, or rain water. So these are four different sources of water. So your job is to get the source, then you either put it in a holding tank, which is still a source, and then you take it to an upper reservoir where you can supply the water by gravity. The idea is that you need to reduce pumping cost. As an engineer, your work is not about providing services to people, but you must provide it within a cost model. You must, I mean, you can't build a house of 20 million for 100 million and you say you're a good engineer. So water supply systems are always done based on gravity. That's why in your houses, you have a limited tank. So as soon as you own your tap, the water just comes out. So you need to have a map of the place. You need to have the topography of the place so that you can be able to know how the pressure distributes because pressure is a very important parameter in your network. And pressure is a function of height. And because heights are fixed, they are rigid, you need to maximize them. You need to make best use of them. Um, I have a project, I know of a project in Mango in Joss. The distance between the water source and the elevated tank or the highest point within the catchment is about 10 kilometers. But that is what they have. 
They can't help it because you must pump water to the upper reservoir so that during distribution, it will go by gravity. The next thing you need to do is you need to calculate your water demand for the people. And in calculating your water demand, you must take cognizance of three things. What are the basic daily usage of the riparian community? Are there expected growth? Are there future developments? Because in design, you must design for worst case scenario. So you must design for the maximum allowable water demand. And when we talk about designing for maximum allowable water demand, we are just saying you must project. If you are to design a water system, you must project 20 years, 30 years, 50 years. And that is the basis of your design. So if after 50 years, there's a problem with your design, you are justified because your design is meant to last for just 50 years, okay? And of course, as engineers, you know that the higher your design horizon, the higher the safety factor. And the higher the safety factor, the higher the cost of execution. That's the common sense. Okay, then the next thing you do is when you have computed this figure, this parameter um, of the different water demand, the growth, and every other parameter, you now sit down and calculate the various water demand. You now sit down and calculate the various water demand. After calculating the various water demand, you now move over to your design network and you now do the design. After doing your design, you now go and do the analysis. Analyze if there are places you have low pressures, if there are places you have zero flow, if there are places that you need to reject. So after doing those things, you now make your conclusion. So these are the very practical steps of doing your water reticulation design. So the first thing is the introduction. What do you do in the introduction? Well, you give a summary of the place you are designing. What is the location? What are the features of that place? What are the source of water? What are the population? What are the usage of the people? What are their work? Because all these parameters will influence their water demand. Mm. When you are doing water demand in a rural area, and when you're doing water demand in an urban area, it's a completely different thing. Like in Nigeria, in Federal Ministry of Water Resources, your specific water demand for rural area is 50, 60 liters per capita a day. Abuja was designed with 100 liters per capita per day with a safety factor of 2.3. In other words, the after estimating that each person living in Abuja will require 100 liters for a daily use, they still added a safety factor of 2.3. We are engineers, you know what I mean by a safety factor. Safety factor that will take care of um, population explosion, which we're having now, um, change in demand, change in land use, water losses, which stands at 40% today in Abuja, yes. 40% of the water produced from Lower Usman Dam is lost. Put me anywhere. And then other design inadequacies. All of us know that if you do your calculation or you do your design sometimes, you normally multiply your value by 1.2 or 1.1. Those of you that are civil engineers, you know what I mean. Or you multiply by a safety factor to take care of contingencies, what we call unknown unknown. There are two types of risk. When you are doing design, there is a known risk and there's a known unknown risk. So the higher the unknown, the higher your safety factor. Okay, so that worst, worst case scenario, your design will stand. So you need to define the place, describe the place. If you have a map of the place, you put up the map, show the map, show the streamlines, 
show where the water is coming from, show the geotechnic of the place, show the, the, the aquifer parameters, and every information that you need. Okay, uh, apology, please. I'll uh, move over to uh, Intel. Okay, so you, you, you take a second look at the study area. You know, when you are citing a water scheme, there are some things you don't do. You don't cite a water scheme where there is problem, physical problem, biological problem, structural problem, or environmental problem. So your, 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 your water source must be free from contamination. In fact, in ideal case, there should be a sort of um, meter radius where there should not be any activity. In a place like Germany, their water, they, they, they give allowance a buffer zone of 50 meters. If they site a borehole, a water well here, 50 meters, radius of that place. No agricultural activity takes place. It's a condition. So you don't go aside your water scheme where there is um, land, landfill or where there is um, mining activity. Okay, I remember many years ago when there was lead poisoning in Zamfara because people were taking water from where they were mining things. That's by the way. But the idea is that you must study your area and you must define it. That is part of what you do as a consultant. You must explain the unique place, the hills, the, the topography, the, the difficulties, okay, the challenge that the contractor will face during that construction, because this is part of what will form the basis of your in terms of reference. So what else do you do? You, you, you put a map showing how the catchment, how people are living in the catchment. Then, then you, 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 you take a look at the study area, the industrial zone, how is it, the population, the, the, the farm areas, how is it, the river, the road, everything about the area, you just speak the whole grammar that you can do there. So what next do you do? You, sorry for all this, I think one of my staff did this and um, I didn't ask him to do all this. You take a section, you take a section of, um, of, of the area so that you look at where there will be potential problems. If, if there are different areas that have different issues, you, you, you try to put them in a good place. You, you put them in proper, um, you show how um, the, the, the area is calibrated. The reason for this is that most times when you want to design a centralized water supply system, you find out that centralized water supply system is not possible. So what you do, you go for decentralized, okay? Decentralized simply means you have different boreholes different elevated tank within the same layout because you, you can't pipe from A to B or you can't pipe from C to D. So B will have a separate system, A will have a separate system because it's just not easy because um, there is a condition that pressure must not be more than eight bars. The pressure in a water distribution network must not be more than eight bars. The reason being that the component of the system such as your pipe, your pumps, your valve, some of them cannot withstand more than eight bars. So in your design, if you are designing in a place and the pressure difference between one point and the other is more than eight bars, it means you need to break the system. You need to, you need to zone the system into zones. You need to, you need to zone them, okay? Uh, um, um, for instance, we all know that 
Um, pressure is a function of The difference between the highest point and the lowest point is more than 80 by 80. First of all, your surveyor need to come go in, of course. Surveyor need to go in and go and take his topo so that you can have the place, topography of the place. So it was about 340, and the lowest point is about 220. So you can see that 340 minus 220 is more than 80. So it means that all of them, one pressure zone cannot work. So the next thing you do is that you break them into zones, okay? Those who are lying within a certain zone will become one system. Those who are lying in a different zone will become another system. Uh, Maboji, you, ask, you have a question? I saw your hand raised. Or was it a mistake? No, it wasn't a mistake. Um, at some point, I don't know if I was the only one, I lost you. You were you were kind of not audible for a while. So okay, I, 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 I switched to a new network. I was using MTN and um, no, me. just no. After you switched, just a, like a uh, one minute ago, I saw I saw network fluctuate. Yeah, it's possible. Okay, so we lost it's you at possible. that at that point. Okay, okay, okay. That means I need to rewind. So what I said at that point was that you need to take a section. If you look at the background here, you you need to know if one system we work for the whole area. Let's say I'm designing for Lake Lake in Lagos. Lake is almost a flat land, so I might not have any problem. So I can just go to the highest point and locate my elevated, elevated tank. In Abuja, it is not the same. Abuja will have like six zones, okay? So, and some zones in Abuja, they have to put, put a booster station. If the water comes from Lower Usman Dam, from using a 1.5 meter diameter pipe that reduces to about one meter, 1.2, one meter, as it, as it gradates downstream, as it goes downstream, at some point, Going towards Buzape, there's a booster station in one of the barracks. So when the water comes, the booster pump boosts it again because the water cannot go because that place is higher. We'll still come to that anyway. So I think that was what I was trying to explain. So zoning is important where one unit, one pressure, as acceptable pressure zone is not workable. So, as I said, this, what is the scenario? We are planning for a 30, we plan for a 30 years. Because you don't plan for today, you plan for the future. And the, param the parameters and the variable you use for your planning is the parameters of the future. So if I want to plan today, let's say for, um, let's say, the, the current population of the place now is about, let's say 100,000. And in 25 years, in 30 years, I expect the population to grow to 150,000. The value that I'll use for my design will be 150,000. That's just the point. Then if I expect that there will be a new university, there'll be a new school, there'll be change of land use, and that change of land use can affect 20% of my development. Then I'll calculate 20% of the population again and add it again, and that will be 170 now. So my final value or what we call population equivalent, PE, which is a very important parameter for your design will now change to 170. So 170 becomes my, my, my design, my, my baseline, okay? So that's just what this thing is talking about. Then um, when we did this design, it was obvious that the population in some areas in Germany then were going down. Others here we are, we are moving. So it, as an engineer, as a consultant, you also have to look at, is this place gonna grow by what percent? Is it gonna reduce by what percent? Is there going to be a change of land use in the next 50 years? Okay, that will help you. If you are piping to an industrial area, as soon as you get to industrial area, then your pipe size must increase, even though you can use a plug and, 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 and lock it. So that in the future, when development gets to that point, they just come and open your plug from the manhole and then put in a new pipe and the thing will continue. This is where um, um, experience comes in. So the next thing you do, after you've done your background check and anything, 
you must move to the, the second most important thing. The, second, the first most important thing is to say, what is the population? What number of years am I designing for? And where am I going to locate my tank, which is the highest point anyway? The next question you're going to ask yourself now is, where am I getting the water? Is the water coming from groundwater? Is it coming from spring? Is it coming from surface water? Is it coming from another long distance water supply? Or is it coming from rainwater? So these are the water sources, or is it coming from surface water? All these water sources, sources have their different requirements, their different costs cost associated with them. Groundwater is the best, is the neatest. Spring water, in fact, spring water is the best, sorry, followed by groundwater. Why is spring water better than groundwater? Because groundwater, you still need energy to pump it out, and that is cost. But for spring water, spring water is a where is a groundwater under pressure. So you don't need pumping. It will just come out here on its own because it is an artisan well. It's an artisan well, and it's an artisan well is a well whose pressure is above ground. An artisan well, or spring, as we call it, in, in, as a layman calls it, is a groundwater or is a well whose pressure is above ground level. So it means the pressure is at the surface, okay? But groundwater, the pressure is still down there. So you need a pump to extract. Then we have the surface water. Surface water is the most expensive for treatment. Surface water requires a lot of tests, test, uh, water testing, sorry. It requires a lot of handling. And it requires a lot of, uh, it requires unique treatment processes, okay? It could be nanofiltration methods to treat it. It could be simple filtration method using filters. It could be using membrane technology. It could be using ion exchange. It could be using um, aeration, simple aeration. So there are different methods, but it depends on the constituent parameters that you want to treat. If the water is full of ion, ion, ion two, the first thing you do is to aerate it, bring in air, bring in oxygen. Oxygen is what you are bringing in, but oxygen is already 21% of air, okay? So you bring in air, the air will react with that ion two inside the water and make it insoluble, thereby converting it from ion two to ion three. Ion two, three is partially soluble, insoluble, okay? In fact, it's partially soluble. Then you now introduce, after you've made it insoluble or partially insoluble, you now introduce what we call coagulants. Coagulant is the general word for all those chemicals that will form, that will make those ion three to become insoluble, okay? And then also make them to flocculate. For flocculate means they will now come together and form big masses, okay? Then when they now form big masses, you can now filtrate them using any kind of membrane or any kind of filter material. I, I take it again. If surface water contains ion, now I'm just talking about ion. If it contains nitrogen um, nitrate, it comes in form of nitrate. There is a different way to treat it. If it contains sulfur, there's a different way to treat it. If it contains any trace elements, there are different methodologies to treat them. But the simplest one, which occurs 70% of the time, is the one that contains a lot of ion. Ion in form of ion silicate, ion, aluminum ion, and any other compound of ion, many of them. The simplest way to treat them is by aeration. That's the first step. And what does aeration do? What aeration does is basically to give him oxygen. If you remember our equation in school, if you give ion two, two plus, 
if you feed him with oxygen, it becomes three plus. And three plus is not soluble in water. It floats. But floating is not enough. You now put sodium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, aluminum sulfates, and many other chemicals. Those chemicals will go and replace those ions and make them flow. I'm not a chemist, chemist, chemist. I'm, I don't do, I'm, I'm not good, I'm not good in chemistry, but that's what happened. The ion will now float. You now use filter. When I mean filter, the simplest filter is sand. Uh, well, well graded sand anyway. Rapid, slow sand filters. And you now use filter to filtrate them because they are not insoluble. Sometimes you can even decant them. When they pass through filtration bed, they can pass through those filters. So the clean water will flow out. And then after flowing out, you can take them through other processes, like um, UV to treat the microorganisms. Um, um, there are many of them. Chlorination, using chlorides, okay, which have been banned in many countries because of um, um, the odor and uh, fear of being carcinogenic, okay? It can cause cancer. Okay, then your water source can also be a water supply from a long distance. In other words, it could be something from Lower Usman Dam in America, which is a bad thing anyway. The those in California, they go to the Gulf of Mexico, right? They go very far and they go and take water and the water will flow in, in, a, in, a, in a channel, thousands, hundreds of kilometers until it gets inland. Then from inland, they will now treat it. Though they, they, they will treat it a little bit at the source, okay? But then now they treat it further. So water can also come from another water distance, long distance water supply. Then it can also come from rainwater, which we have not been practicing in Nigeria for now. But where they are, where in water scarce country, rainwater is a, is a variable source of water. So I've said two things. You have done your topography, determine the highest point, the lowest point, explain the topography, explain the area. You've, you've, you've looked at your water source, you've done your testings, you've seen the one that is best, you've developed the, the method for treatment. The next thing is you now start to rigid the population. You put them into phases or catchments so that you know how to pipe to your piping or how to distribute the water, okay? Um, that's why if you come to Abuja, we have, um, we have um, Wuse, Guzape, uh, sorry, not Wuse, Guzape. Uh, we have um, um, Guarimpa, Jahi, we have Asokoro, we have Guzape, we have Gudu. These are the six water distribution area. Okay, so the same thing you do, if it's a large in a state or a large place, you can also partition them into sections and then estimate their population. So here, the population today is 4,200, but the expected population at the end of my design, at the end of my design period is 6,300. Now, uh, the second place is for Chile, it's a German one, don't mind it, is 950 in 25 years time, in 30 years time, it's gonna be 1,200. So this is what you do. After that, you apply population equi equation. Uh, Nigeria is growing at the rate of 3.9% or thereabouts. So you also have to look at the population of the place by designing and come up with um, um, plausible values that can project, predict and project what the population will be in your, in the, at the end of lifespan of your design. Then you now do a water test of all the water areas, all the water tests. Uh, when I'm sending the material, I'll send us some UN standard, European standard uh, for water quality so that we can read through during the week. So when we now did the test for all the areas, these are the values we got, okay? Um, in doing water testing, there are three things to test for water, physical parameters, biological parameters, and chemical parameters. The test water for physical parameters, the chemical parameters, and biological parameters. In testing water for physical parameters, 
you look out for the turbidity. You look out for the turbidity. You look out for the color. Um, you look out for, okay, let me share this one on our platform. So can you quickly go to the chat box? Let me just share this. It's, it's something valuable. Um, of course, you can download it online. It's, um, it's everywhere online. So for the physical parameters, it is the color, the conductivity, the turbidity, the, the resistivity, which is the inverse of the conductivity, and the smell, right? The smell, the odor, the physical conductivity, the stability, and what have you. Then, okay, so go to the chat box, is there now. So I can also open it now. My own. So this is what it is. So this is the water, drinking water point standard. So here, this is the German standard. This is the European Union standard. And this is the World Health Organization standard. So um, if you look down here, you see microbiological parameters. Here, you have chemical parameters. Then here, you have physicals, the bacterials. E. coli and E. coliforms. E. coli is a very dangerous bacteria found in water that causes um, dysentery, um, um, what have you, what is it, cholera, diarrhea, diarrhea, okay? Then we have fungal, this is a German word, don't mind. But once you type online, say, water quality parameters, you get them. Then the chemical parameters, we talk about nitrates. Nitrates comes from agricultural, MPK fertilizers, agricultural things, okay? They contaminate groundwater. Then we have fluoride. Fluoride is good, but too much of it causes um, problem with the teeth. Then we have nitrates. Nitrates can make the water to be acidic. Normally, water should have a pH of seven. Okay, so if there's too much nitrates, it might be, you no, know, might be more alkaline or so. Then we have the color. Uh, color should be under physical, but oh yeah, it's under physical. Yeah, it falls under physical. Then we have the physical parameters, the turbidity. Then you have the color. Then you have uh, other organics in water. So this is something about that. Somebody say, where can we find the documents? I've sent it to your chat box. Go to your chat box, you can get it, sir. And um, as a designer too, please, I want to encourage you, sir. Something I've learned newly. Everything you need is online. Just know how to search on such things on Google and maybe get ready to pay small dollar if need be. Give me something that is worth paying for. Get everything. Okay, so that is that. I hope there's no question. We won't, we won't spend one hour. Okay, so you can see. So you can take your time and study this. Of course, this slide will be shared, shared to you. You can take time and study. So I have done, we have done four things. Layout, topography, what does the area look like? After that, we we'll look at the source of water. We established it. No, we do. We did pressure zoning. After the topography, we're able to find out that okay, I, I, it's not only one borehole source I need. I need to sink three boreholes at this three different locations, not just one borehole in one location, which is not even ideal. Anyway, then you've measured the next thing. You measure the population of the people, and you, from the population, you say okay, one industrial borehole will not do. I need to sink four, five, six, seven, eight, or surface water will not do. I need to do combined surface water, groundwater, rainwater, and what have you. Then the next thing, what is the quality of this source of water? You treat it, you do it. Then the next thing you now do is, you now go into your layout and lay out, you now do your network, sorry. You now design your network. So in design your network, you look at the different areas. Use, Galki, Guarimpa, Leki, Ikoi, Lagos Island, blah, blah, blah. You distribute them based on their population equivalent. You don't design based on one number. Okay? Even in an in United States, you can, you can design based on streets or phases. Phase one, you do a design for them. Phase two, you do a design for them. 
But even if you want to do one common design, then you must have a holding tank. The idea is for you to be able to, in case of maintenance, you don't shut down everybody. Okay? I know in Abuja, when they want to do some maintenance, they, 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 they specify which area and they just go up, turn off the valve. Okay? And ask those people to prepare water ahead of maintenance. And also, it helps you to do your calculation. If I know that the people living in industrial north are 10,000 in population, I will know their pipe size. I will know how to define the pipe going to industrial north. If those in center are 2,000 in number, I will define their pipe going there. If people in camping area have a certain number, I will design their pipe based on that number. Are you with me? Now, this is something we are, we are supposed to do next week, but let me let me just do it now, okay? Let me do it now. To divide to design any pipe for a water reticulation, you just need three parameters. You need the discharge. The discharge can also be called the demand, water demand. It can also be called the flow. It can also be called the water requirement, whatever. You can, you can use only any of these words interchangeably. They all mean the same thing, right? And that is called Q. Ah, I'm sorry I'm doing this now. This is a next, this is um next week's work because today we are doing introduction. Next week we'll start a calculation. But I'm just tempted to make it sink in. The next thing you need to do is what is the slope of that area? Then the next thing you need is to say, what type of pipe am I using? The, that type of pipe, why you need the type of pipe is that you want to get what we call the frictional factor. So what pipe, what kind of pipe am I going to use? Uh -uh. Okay. So you need the, the demand, you need the slope, and then you need the pipe, the material of the pipe. Because the, the, the smoother the pipe, the higher the flow. Then the slope, the slope, the more slopey an area is, the smaller the pipe size you need. But the major, the major parameter, the most the indispensable parameter is the discharge. Then how do you get the discharge of an area? What you do for discharge is very simple. Discharge is simply the water demand for one person. The demand for one person, eh? Multiply by the number of persons. That's all. Then multiply by safety factor. Safety factor is always there. It's always it's, as an engineer, you cannot do a design without taking care of safety factor. It's almost impossible because you yourself, you can't be hundred percent sure of what you are designing. And you, don't, you can't be sure that the end users will comply with your design. Okay? That, those are known risk. Your known risk is that they might not even implement what you designed. They're just gonna implement something else, but using values from your design. So even if they use some values on your design, they will still somehow fall within your professional uh, 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 advice, sort of. So now, all over the world, UN standard says water demand per person, WHO standard. WHO says one person requires 150 liters per person. We call it per capita anyway, per, per day. It means that one human being needs 150 liters of water. But the, the range is 100 to 150. In Nigeria, we're even using less. We're even using between 160 to 100, depending on whether it's local areas. Somebody raised his hand. He said, I'm not a water guy. But I'm sure discharge and demand are the same. They are the same, sir. Yeah, I have a question. Trust me, sir. Go Sorry, ahead, sir. concerning the safety factor that you are talking about. Sorry, if we have done concerning the safety factor that you are 
talking about if we have done mm -hmm. the projection of the population, do we still need to mm -hmm. use the safety factor? You, no, you, you use the safety factor for your, when you have gotten your demand, you now multiply it by your safety factor, just like we do yeah. in dam design. Yeah, um, I understand what you are saying. I yeah. understand what you are saying. Well, if we are talking about the population now, if we mm -hmm. have projected the population for the next for the next 30 years, do we still need yes. to use the safety factor again? Yeah, you still you still you still use the safety factor, sir. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The reason is that the safety factor is a design parameter. What I mean that design parameter is that it affects the whole thing. It's like in fact, meanwhile, safety factor is between 1.3 to 2.3. When based on German standard anyway, but it's, 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 it's gonna be adapted to a redesign. So you, you have to choose between 1.3 to 2.3. Now, the higher the number of persons, the lower the safety factor. The lower yeah. the number of persons, the higher the safety factor. So safety factor, if you're a modeler, safety factor is those factors that helps you to take care of known and unknown. I, I always love to use that. In modern, we call it externalities. Okay, it helps you to take care of your externalities. Externalities means <laughs> something that's beyond your control, you know, external factors, in quotes. Okay, so it now depends on the population equivalent. You multiply by 2.3. As I said, Abuja, Abuja, I think they designed Abuja for 1 million people. But those Germans are smart, and I, I am happy, I'm happy for what they did. They use a safety factor of 2.3. So when I, when I see people, they'll tell you that Abuja is 230 liters per capita per day. I know, I know it's not true. As a water expert, I know it's not true. What, what they are seeing as 230 liters per person is actually 100 multiplied by a safety factor of 2.3. Okay. In fact, 2.3 is a German standard, and that's why, I, and that's why I caught them. Okay, that's how I got to know. So, so, so somebody can tell you that I use 150 liters per capita. Eh? If you didn't see any other safety factor, why not also assume that you use 100, but you now use a safety factor of 1.5? That's engineering for you. Okay. Thanks. Me, right from when I was a junior designer, I know that if somebody asked me to do a bill, after doing my bill, I'll multiply by 1.2. Nobody taught me that one. Because I know that tomorrow, in fact, these days, if you ask me to do a bill, I'm going to multiply by 1.5. Because I know that between my doing my design and you going to the Nigerian market, the price of things must have increased by, by, by 50%. Me, I'm sure of that one. Okay, let's continue. Now, and I would like us to do a simple, small exercise now. That small exercise we're going to do is, oh, well, I don't know if I finished this. So in, in calculating your demand now, if I am, let me say my home now is a three bedroom bungalow. Okay. Whatever. Bungalow. Okay. And um, I let tell people use a population of 10 persons. Though people will say between seven and 10, use a population equivalent for a three bedroom bungalow of three to 10 persons. Okay. Then. Your water demand is 100 liters per capita a day. And um, I love to use a safety factor of 2.0 because I'm very lazy. I don't want too much calculation. Okay. So if I want to do the water demand, water requirements of my where I'm staying, for instance, or where you are staying, a three bedroom, okay, to determine the value for one unit. So that if you are 100 units, I'll just multiply by a factor of 100, okay? Then if you are 1,000 houses in that layout, I'll just multiply the value of one. But that will be, if they are homogeneous anyway, if you miss all of them are three bedroom. So even if there's, let's, let's do for 10, so that the calculation will be easy for us. Mm -hmm. So it means from what I just said here, the water demand is 100. Now watch this calculation, liters per capita per day. Huh? Sorry. Okay, I'll multiply it. by the number of persons, and we say, let's use 10. Then safety factor, let me use two. 
why, why we always use a big safety factor is that in doing water design, we expect it to even have a two days, two days, people talk about two day storage. Engineering is sweet, it's interesting. These two here, some people will refer it as two day storage, but you as an engineer, as a water expert, it is not two day storage, it is a safety factor of two. People will tell you that you are doing design, you are supposed to have water, like the water that will be enough for you for two days before you pump. It's okay, that's a layman. But I need, it's a water expert, it's, it's a safety factor. Okay, so if I multiply this now, what am I gonna get? I'm gonna get 2,000 liters per day. Capital have disappeared because I've multiplied by the capital, which is 10. Safety factor is unitless. Okay, so that means, oh, it's 2,000. That means for a household of 10, a household of 10 people, the minimum amount of water you need to give them is about two meter cube per day. So if I'm not doing a one day storage, or, or what I call one day, one day pumping, it means I pump only once in a day. It means I need to provide them with a tank size. This is, this is just summary, remember? Later in the course, I'll show you how to calculate for tank. There's a better way to calculate for tank, okay? But that will be if you know the, the consumption pattern of the area, which is difficult. So if this is two, that means the, the, the thing will just be two meter cube tank, or the one we call 2,000 liters. All of us know 2,000 liters, a GP tank. 2,000 liters tank. But if I, had, if I had used a safety factor of 1.5, meaning that when I have the storage, this number would have come to 1.5 GP tank. Then if I am to, if I say I'm pumping twice per day, watch me now. If I say I'm going to pump, or what we call 12 hours pumping, it means after every 12 hours I go and pump water. Then it means that this value will reduce because one day, one day is um, 24 hours. So if we're not talking about 12 hours, you know, we're going to do a mathematics like this. Two, over 12 over 12, 24, that kind of thing. Eh? The summary of it is, is that it will give you something smaller. to give you something like one liter, one lit, 1,000 liters. It means every, every 12 hours, I'll go and fill my tank again. So when I get this value, that becomes the value I will use for my design. But for you to do your pipe sizing, you must reduce these 2,000 liters per day. You must reduce it into liters per seconds. Because in, in doing your, your discharge, you must reduce it to the smallest unit. And that smallest unit is the liters per seconds. There's no smaller unit than liters per seconds. Now, one day, one day is 24 hours. One hour is 60 minutes. 60 minutes is 60 seconds. If you do this mathematics, you're going to get 8,400 seconds. So one day is the equivalent of 800, 8,400 seconds. Therefore, if I now want to convert this into liters per second, this thing will be important from next week. I know I'm bringing it on board. It means that the water demand in per second, this one is 2,000 liters per day. You only use it for tank sizing. But for pipe sizing, you need it in the lowest limit, the lowest unit. And that's the lowest unit is liters per second. So here, it will now be 2,000 divide 8,600. Eight six four hundred. So two thousand divide eight six four hundred. Uh -uh. Sorry. It will give you zero point zero two three one liters per seconds. 
this becomes a value you use for further, further calculation. This is not the value from here now, from next week. Once you get this value, you're going to move to your charts, which I'm going to provide for us, to us. You move to your charts. You now check the slope, the frictional factor, read against this charge, the pipe size will show, will come out. Any question? Mike, you're raising your hand. What yes. You um, actually, I've been following with keen interest. And then uh, sequel to a question that was asked initially, uh, I need to also clarify this. Already okay. uh, in the 100 liters per capita per day, mm -hmm. uh, I want to believe that there's a factor of uh, safety that covers laws, I mean, technical laws in that mm -hmm. 100 liters per capita per day before it was actually arrived at. And now we are also introducing another factor of safety which is uh, probably 2.0. Yeah, or 1.3. Um, yes, yeah. It, 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 will, it not, will it not actually give us something probably that is uh, over, over the sign or something like that? Because uh, along the line, I know whichever uh, uh, value we are getting, we still need to probably take care of uh, all these technical losses, which probably we don't envisage have been issue. So uh, how do we correlate that, please? Thank you. You, you. you just use the word that I want to re echo over designing. In many infrastructure design, especially water or any underground design, it is advisable to over design than, than under design. Under design is a colossal loss. Over designing is just extra money. So, to start with, over designing is allowed in water reticulation system because the system can only Grew. You know, this is a great fact. When you finish your design, there's every tendency that your, your pipe, water will flow in at 50% of your pipe, pipe, what we call depth of flow. Okay? It means if you put your pipe like this, water will flow in at the center. But towards the end life span of your design, water will flow in at, say, 70 or 90 or 70%. Now, what you said makes sense. We've already factored in, we've already factored in some safety factor, but which means you and, you and I doesn't know in that 100 liters. Because that 100 liter is an assumption. It's an assumption. But this safety factor is also something that the code and standard specify that you should do. It's like a, it's like um, it's like a model quality. It's like a, a, a requirement, a standard requirement that you should upscale whatever value you get. But then a range was given to you. So instead of you not introducing that safety factor, I would advise you maybe you lower it to 1.5, but you have to introduce it because the losses you have introduced. Are assumptions. These are assumptions without you turn into consideration the new location that there is going to be used. Those that, that, those that came up with 100 liters, they came up with as a generic value. But you will now introduce your own safety factor so that you can take care of the uniqueness or the, the, the exact uniqueness of where you are designing. Are you getting it? So, safety factor, the second tier safety factor is necessary. And in terms of our designing, we shouldn't be afraid. But when we start our design proper, I want to bring you to speed that even as much as our designing is, is, is allowed, there's a limit to it. So the standard says that your water should flow between 70 and 90%. Let me say it quickly, even though that we've not gone to the right level. Water flow in your pipe must be between 70 to 90%. Don't go and design something and water will be flowing at 50, less than 50%. A poor designer. Hmm? What this simply means is, let, let me give you what, what this means. Give this your pipe. Huh? Water flow should be between here and somewhere here. This should be the lower boundary. This should be the upper boundary. But it shouldn't be somewhere here. If water is here and then all this place is free, oh, sorry, I, I can't just, um, uh, this is no to car. So, but, but I think, I think some of us just got it. If this is your pipe and you do your design at, at, every, at every point, level of water is here, you're a poor designer. The standard says that the water should be between 70. So it means it should be 70% full 
all the time, but it should not exceed 90%. Can someone tell me why it should not exceed 90%? Why should you not exceed 90%? So that don't be so charged. Um, um, yeah, yeah, and then to give room for uh, air pressure. trap because uh, pressure, yes, which definitely will be released via because air if, if, release if, if, it's, if it's so charges and that pipe breaks inside ground, what would you do? You can't even trace it. Problem. So that's it. All right. Okay. So let me go back to what I want to establish before that question come, came in. The, the, what I'm trying to establish at this point, I just want you to understand how you can compute um, the water demand per liter per day. Because I just want us to treat this exercise now, very simple exercise, which um, because of time, might not really allow us to treat it. Maybe the fiscal training now, give us the time, everybody will treat it. This is industrial notes. When you see meter cube per day, what is it telling you? It means that we have multiplied, we've, we've, just, we've done what we just did now. When you see this value, 2,900 meter cube per day is the water demand of the people in the industrial north, in the industrial zone. Swimming pool area requires 240.3 meter cube per day. This value now, you can convert it to liters per second. One meter cube is 1,000 liters. So what this thing is giving you an idea is the size of tank you will provide for that area. But the same size of tank is, is what you now downgrade. Uh, sorry, you 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 downscale. When you downscale it into liters per seconds, you now use it to design the pipe that should be able to convey this level of water per day. I wish I can use a layman's example to really explain what I mean. Now, people living in North Star North requires 2,942 liters of water. What pipe size are you going to use to deliver that water every second? So all you need to do is to use this this value to lead that perfectness. And then you go up to your pipe charts and then you get it. That is exactly what I tried to do here. You can see how I converted it. At this point, I converted the two liters per day into the two liters per day. So this is, this is where you do it. This is where you do it. So with this now, you can see, you can see that If, if I now, if I now, if, if, if assuming now that there are 1,000 houses, stay with me now, stay with me, stay with me. Assuming that this is, this is a Ajay estate and there are 1,003 bedrooms in Ajay estate. The simple thing I'll do is I'll just 1,000 times the requirement for one house. Gentlemen, that's what it is. So if I'm doing it in meter cube, if I'm doing it in meter cube, what will happen now? Meter cube. Eh? Per day, Abi. So, that will give me that the, the water requirement of this of the estate of Aja or the city of Aja is 2,000 meter cube per day. Then if I now want to do my pipe design, I will now convert this to liters per seconds because you know how I'm going to do it. Okay, I'll simply say 2,000 times 1,000 converted to liters. And as, soon as, as soon as I do, I will introduce L. Eh? This is 2000 M. There's a way we do it in, in science. If I put this one, I'll put over, I'll put M3. But let me not power balls with those, those technicalities. So that M, M will cancel M, M3, will M cancel M3. So when M3 cancel M3, you just have this left. Mm -hmm. Then divided, divided by converting day. If I come at day to seconds, that's 8600. Right? Someone would have told me, why not just multiply 0 0.0231 by 1000 instead of going on through, through, through this stress? Because that's the same value you're going to get anyway. But it's good that I do this so that um, those of us that have forgotten our mathematics will know that engineering, you can't leave your mathematics. So it's giving me 23, 23.1. It's not the same thing as multiplying that value. It does a second. So it means people living in Aja, for them to get adequate water every second, there must be 23 liters. There must be a pipe pipe 
that, that is discharging water at the rate of 23 liters for every second. So from next week, once I get this value, I'll go to what we call nomogram chart. There are many charts in the market, but my own is the one I, okay, sorry. Once I get that value, I'll go to my, I will send, I'm gonna send all, all these things. Uh, it's called nomogram charts. Why not just send it to us now? Okay, let me just send it quickly to our chat box. Now, there are, there are three types. Um, depend on the, the type of pipe you are using. 0 0.1 is for PVC pipe. 0 0.4 is for ductile ion. 1.0 is for concrete pipe. All of us know that nobody's using concrete pipe. We'll come to sewage design after three weeks. We now know that, yes, you can use concrete to convey sewage. And therefore, you use that, that particular parameter. So I'm trying to. Okay, it's like you cannot, you can't send two things, more than one thing at a time. You have to send it one by one. So, now this nomogram is the one developed by Invention of Stuttgart. Please, if you go to the market, if you go to the internet, you see a lot of charts. Uh, when we're doing US, Federal Highway Man, okay, the one they use for sewer design. I will send us, but you know, unfortunately, it's in inches, so you have to do some conversion. But I expect at the end of the class, we can find on other charts online that can do pipe sizing for us. So many of them. Every university in in the US have this chart on their own. Just imagine students have their own, so you can imagine. I mean, these are things we can develop. I know there are some of our engineers that have developed them. Yes, people have done research on some of those things. Okay, so this is it. This is it. So, sorry, I don't know what, the, what, it, what it is again. So you can see the how they got about this. This is how they got about this. So next week I will, I will now show us this, and um, I will just ask us to design this, design that, and uh, we can design all this, all this stuff, okay? We can design all this stuff, but, but let's, let's, we have time, we have time. Let's, 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 design, let's design them. So this is 2,948, okay? Now, it, well, how they got this? How we got this is that we will multiply population times water demand. So this is total water demand for this area. So if I, wanna, if I now want to design the mains, the mains, in a water retribution system, you have um, like three or four tiers of pipes. You have the distribution pipe, transmission pipe. Transmission pipe is one that takes water from source to elevated tank. Then we have primary line. Primary line is the one that runs along the street, the one that brings water along the street. Then we have secondary line. The one that runs along substreets. And finally, we have the tertiary, which, which is the one that goes into your house. Okay. Um, um, somebody will forgive me. But well, let me open my AutoCAD and just show us the latest one of the designs that um, I can use. Let me just the, the, let me just show us the, the visual, the, the visual, the visual, so that you know um, which one is the main. So for this design now. All these pipes you see here are the main, are the main pipes or primary. These are the mains. So, and for many water retention systems, once you are able to design the mains, you have done your work. Yes, if you design the mains very well, the secondary. I don't get this now. The secondary and the tertiary are not are usually no problem. Okay, let me see if we can open. So if you design the mains now, like this mains now, this is the main pipe, the main pipe going to this area. When you get to these areas, there will not be other secondary pipes. Now, in water articulation, if you get the primary pipe wrong, then you have rubbish the system. Because 
It's like, let me give you something that happens in our houses. That's why when you are on your tap, you have water, your neighbor will not have tap, even though I'm also, I'm not, I've not done it about it. The ideal pipe size to bring in water into a, a house is two inches pipe from the mains. Then once it enters the house, it cannot use one and a half inch or one inch pipe. Because the mains is so important that if there is a pressure loss in the mains, the secondary are gone. So you can use a big pipe for the main pipe. Then the secondary pipe can just come using the reducers and attach to the mains. So here, gentlemen, I have to close this. I think this is giving me problem. This is giving me problem. This is strange. Just stay with me. Okay. Industrial notes with 2942 now means they have computed the population and the water demand. So our job will now be if you reduce it, if you reduce it to the barest minimum, we now go to our charts. Can we open those charts? So let me open the charts. Um I'm using a PVC pipe. So I can open the chart for uh, the one with 0 0.1 frictional factor. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's the same thing. The transmission line is the bulky line supply. Well, it depends. The, 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 the well, it depends. It depends. Yeah, it, it, it could be. No, the bulky line supply looks like something that will be the primary. Something that looks like the primary. The primary. Uh, you know, Brian, go, just go scroll up. Scroll up in the chat box. You'll see the you see the chart. This is one out of a thousand charts. As I said, in engineering, we make use of chart a lot. All of you will agree with me. You make use of chart a lot. I'm having a technical problem. Um, I need to sort it out. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is what the chart looks like. Okay. Um, this is what the chart looks like. On the horizontal, it is flow in liters per second, which is your discharge. On the horizontal, in the vertical, it is your, your flow. Then on, the, on this particular chart, you can see frictional losses in pressure pipes. K is 1.0. Okay, this is 1.0. Okay, uh, 1.0 for concrete pipe, but that is that it doesn't mean anything. Uh, <laughs> I'm having a problem. Just stay with me. Um, let me pause this.